Alrighty, it's been a while. We are back. Uh, Wavefront Media Business Series podcast. Uh, today, here we are with uh, Dean Schmeichel, uh, owner of YYC CrossFit. Uh, I know him from a, a ways back uh, through wrestling, right? So I figured yep. we met last week again, reunited, and uh, figured he's he'd be the perfect candidate for this podcast because it's in the new niche where I'm going uh, with this business, which is the health, health and wellness umbrella. Right, so Dean Schmeichel, owner of YYC CrossFit. I think when we last saw each other, I was probably this tall. Yeah, you were, you would have been in high school or just coming out of high school. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, young wrestler. Yeah. Yeah, I was an old. Arms like this. Yeah. Scrappy a, guy, though. Old former wrestler. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So, my coach, so I graduated at Bull Valley High School. My coach there, uh, Matt Baugh, uh, you guys were roommates. Yep, right? roommates and longtime friends. So, we're both from Saskatchewan. Yeah, I'm from the center of the universe, which is Prince Albert, and he comes from, uh, you know, lesser than town, North Battleford. So yeah, um, but yeah, he was. We were. Um, I'm a little bit older than him, but uh, high school um, f- friendly, and then university. Um, you know, there's only a handful of wrestlers that pursue wrestling beyond university, and yeah, and so then you you end up all kind of centralizing. So yeah. Yeah. So you guys knew each other back in high school, hey? A little bit, yeah. So like I said, I was older than him. and A um, few years? Uh, yeah, but university at the same time. So within the same, you know, within the same generation. Yeah. Yeah. And when did, um, when did you start wrestling? Was this in high school or before? Before. So 1986. Um, I started, so I was in grade eight. Um, That's when I started too, about grade eight. Yeah. yeah. And before that, I played soccer and soccer was kind of my thing, right? Yeah. I'm kind of embarrassed to say that. The reason I quit soccer is my friends quit soccer. Okay. Um, so then my mom said, yeah, like my mom was broken hearted actually, but um, she just said, you, you can't do nothing. So yeah. you have to figure something out. So if we're going to quit soccer, then. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So one of my soccer buddies, actually, his brother was a wrestler and he uh, gave me a call one day and asked if I wanted to come check it out with him. And yeah, our, my junior high teacher was the coach. Um, and then it just turned out that my town was really, really well situated for having a successful wrestling team. So yeah, we had three really high quality coaches. We had a huge massive room, uh, better than any room I've ever been in since. Mm. So we had three full size mats, a trampoline, uh, access to the pool, yeah, Olympic size diving pool and Olympic, uh, maybe a half Olympic swimming pool. But yeah, but yeah so the facilities were great. The coaches were great. What, and what was the, like, where was this again? And what's the facility? So it's called Carlton Comprehensive High School in Prince Albert. And okay. Of course it's 30 years ago. So yeah. Um, I don't know if the kids still think it's state of the art or not, yeah. But, um, but yeah, we had a fantastic setup. Yeah. So, so, uh, so wrestling, I think it's a, a funny sport to join. It's not one of those, it's not a comfortable sport. You were in a no. singlet. It's, yeah. it's, you get nervous. Yeah. I used to puke before matches. <laughs> <laughs> what what was it about? Like there has to be something about, um, Something about someone that makes them want to join wrestling because it's not a comfortable, like it's easier to do continue soccer or, you yeah. know. Yeah. So I would describe it as a, a intimate sport. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you're touching your, uh, and, and there's nothing pleasant about it. Um, so the thing that I liked about it was the individual nature, but still a very close team. So one of the, probably the closest, closest team I've ever been on throughout. So right from my grade eight year all the way through, I wrestled until I was 31 years old. And those people become your closest friends for yeah. life, right? And so that bond that you create in that room is is probably second to none. I, like I, I didn't play high level football, but um, those teams where you kind of see that brotherhood, we definitely had that in wrestling as well. Yeah. Um, and so that was a big part of it. But also I realized pretty early on, I was a bad teammate. Um, so I was very critical of myself, but I was very critical of my teammates. And yeah, that's not a great uh, quality to have in those team sports. And so as soon as I found an individual sport where I could still get the benefit of being on a team, but have that individual nature where everything was up to me, because mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the feeling of being in a final, right? Where yeah. everyone was watching, um, I had earned the right to be there and I didn't panic in those situations. I enjoyed those situations. And yeah, sometimes I wasn't up to the, up to the challenge, but I still enjoyed having everything on me and not relying on anyone else. Yeah, that's that's what I noticed with um, with wrestling, an individual sport. I was kind of the same because I played soccer too, Yeah. right? But I don't know. There was something about 
being responsible for everything. It's only up to you. Yep. Um, it makes it, it's harder, right? You get way more nervous for a wrestling match than you would a team sport, yep. right? Um, but it's when you get that win, right? When you've been grinding, you've been working, and you get that win, yep. it feels way better. It feels way more satisfying. Yeah. So, like, now that I coach, I look at it so much more romantically than I did as a kid. Like as a kid, I was just trying to win. Yeah. Now I look at it and I see these kids walk out and symbolically they're naked, right? Like they're in a spandex singlet. They're going out there, but uh, so sorry, literally they're naked, but uh, symbolically they are too. They're standing out there by themselves. They don't know what's about to happen. Um, And it takes a lot of courage for those kids to go out there. And so I look back and I didn't view it that way. I didn't view it as courageous. You know, it is right. Like you send those kids out there and they're looking around for help. That's why they like having a coach in their corner and they can become, uh, like dependent on having that one specific coach or they become dependent on the routine. So if they don't have a banana and an apple juice and a bagel for breakfast, they might not win. Right. Like, yeah. So those things come up because it's just so stressful for them to be in that situation alone. And so then they need something to to give them comfort, like a, like a blanket. Right. And so yeah, then almost they, like a routine. Yeah. And they need that root, that perfect routine. We, yeah. I used to do that too. You know? Yeah. And they become, set something up for comfort. That's right. And then that gives them that I won because I had a banana for breakfast or I lost because I didn't. And you know, kid, they're kids and grown ups do it too. So it like it, you, it takes a long time in wrestling to figure out, um, you know, the, the, the strategy or the, the, the framework you're going to use to become successful, mm-hmm. right? So kids that are in university, they're just, they're just babies in the sport. They've been yeah. doing it for 10 years and they're babies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a funny sport. And I know other sports are like that too, but wrestling is, I think, unique in yeah. how hard it is, how stressful it is, how emotional it is. Um, I think it's just a unique yeah. blend of all those things. Well, and it's interesting. Like, I follow UFC very closely now, but you get yeah. to hear, like, all of the athletes from different sports talk about what is the most, the hardest thing to do, yeah. right? The hardest sport. Even Joe Rogan will say it's uh, wrestling's the most intense yeah. sport. Uh, not, and I think that intensity, right? Um, most people can't hit that intensity. Like, I've done jujitsu, yeah. I respect it fully, I like it, but there's a different level of intensity. I could not go back and do wrestling now. Right. Yeah, no, nobody wrestles for fun. You don't go you play a, pick, play a pickup it. game of wrestling. Yeah, no, it doesn't happen. <laughs> so, you're going to get hurt. You're going to yeah. be tired in two minutes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> two, I went back. So I'm One almost minute. 50. Yeah. And uh, in a 60 minute practice, I was just trying to help out, but I knew that I didn't have the, the gas needed to, to yeah. get through a practice. So I think I did a two minute with about six minutes off, a one minute with about six minutes off, and then a couple 30 seconds. And I, like, it took me two weeks to recover from four minutes. <laughs> Probably yeah. tweaks and injuries and, yeah. yeah. The so, neck, the neck's the thing that... Shoulders, yeah. Yeah. So a topic I like to, to get into a lot is mindset, right? And I've found there's a lot of things in wrestling and the mindset I built through wrestling that's helped me a lot in business, right? So what, from your experience, like, from going through the high school wrestling to university, what, what was the impact or what was some stuff you'd say on mindset and how did your mindset develop through going through? Well, so um, the number one thing is you learn to immerse yourself in the process instead of the end result. And so um, the, the, the highest level wrestlers aren't looking at winning a match or losing a match. They're just immersed in the process and then that process leads to the result. Um, it's, been a, it's been a tough struggle for the last four years coming out of like through COVID and then coming out of COVID, there's this rain shadow of, of stuff that if you don't own a business, you wouldn't understand. Um, you know, the same number of people aren't there anymore. They're working from home differently. Um, and so all these things have occurred and now we're in this new, um, environment, this new business environment that, that essentially none of us have ever seen before. And because I was so new to entrepreneurship, because I only became an entrepreneur entrepreneur in 2019. I was a teacher for 23 years. Um, so this is the only world I've known. And if I only worried about what the end result is going to be, um, I would never get there anyways. I, I would just I'd fizzle out. And so the, the biggest thing from wrestling, you referred to the grind earlier, but the biggest thing for me from wrestling is that you 
have to embrace the grind of it. You have to embrace the everyday of it in order to achieve the thing that you want at the end of the road, the dream goal Yeah. at the end of the road. And so I've just tried, you know, it's not every day. I'm not successful with not worrying about the things I can't control, but I, I do a pretty good job of zeroing in on the things that I can control Yeah. and just trying to make incremental change um, for the better Yeah. each and every day in terms of the business and in terms of, you know, you can't, I was watching, uh, so James Smith, he's a podcast or um, a, a social media guy, but he's, I like him a lot. And he had this triangle of, you have your relationship, your, like your relationships, your family or whatever your core relationships are, your business and then your health. And it was just this idea that it's like a struggle to make sure that you can hit all three of those yeah. successfully. Right. And so you can't lose sight of that as well. You can't just zero in on your business at the expense of everything else in your life. And so you have to have this balance, right. And think wrestling taught me to have balance in life. I worked hard when I was in the wrestling room. Maybe my coaches might disagree, but I think <laughs> I worked hard when I was in the wrestling room. Um, but I also had a great time with my friends and I also had a career. And so I, I was pretty good at when I was focused on the thing that I was doing that I was focused on. So if I was with my friends or my loved ones, I was, I was focused on them. And when I was in the room, I was focused. And when yeah. I was at work, I was focused. And so yeah. I think that compartmentalization yeah um helps yeah and for sure so there's like you're never going to do anything as physically demanding or emotionally demanding as wrestling ever yeah. in my life like those days have come and gone and so i know i can handle the challenge it's just making sure that you can stay healthy through it right yeah. so that you know there's been a lot of sleepless nights there's been a lot of times i wake up at two and then my brain starts to work and you can't go back to sleep because you're worried about the day ahead right and so um having that wrestling background or having sport background in general, but wrestling specifically, I think has helped me, um, you know, just, okay. So I've got the next 12 hours and here's the things I need to do in the next 12 hours. And yeah. Um, I also want to go for coffee with my buddies. And so I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing and go for coffee with my buddy, yeah. come back and start again. So yeah. I think, I think that has probably been the biggest, um, impact in terms of how I've made it through the last, four to five years because this last four to five years has been tough. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of that mindset that comes over. Right. So there's a quote, my, uh, my old friend used to say, uh, be comfortable in the uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. So you mentioned there's an intensity in wrestling, right. And there is, and someone has asked me recently, like, why are you so calm? Like, why are you so calm? I'm like, that's from, that's from doing hundreds going through the process of going into the wrestling ring yeah. hundreds of times over. And you legit are thrown into the most intense, nervous situation. I used to puke before matches. I was yep. so nervous, yep. right? But by going through that so many times, right, um, it creates this this almost calmness, or you almost get used to being in these high intensity situations, yep. right? So, like, I see so much uh, like of the same thing now when like COVID hit, right? I didn't panic. It's just another intense situation, and you're. I like the, what you said about um, focus on the process, right? That's huge. I didn't realize that when I was in wrestling, right? I used to always be trying to get the gold medal. It made me more nervous. but should have just been focused on the technique, the performance yeah. in the moment because I would end up in the best result, yeah. right? But that's a mindset that I've learned further, like learned since through people like Gary, Gary V yeah. and stuff like that. They always say stay focused on the process, yeah. right? And just doing the best you can in the moment. Yeah. 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 No, well, it's, um, it's, um, life lessons that pop up all the time. You, you don't always connect it to, uh, to the things that you learn. Like it's not as, it's not, oh, I, I did this because, because wrestling taught me. Yeah. Right. To be calm in a, in a, in a flurry situation. But, um, but yeah, you, you know, it's, it's what you've learned to do. And, um, the, the thing I try to teach, cause I, like I said, I coach at the university for the developmental team. And the thing that I hope that I impart on them is, um, em embrace the butterflies. Like the butterflies happen no matter what, like I rest, like I said, I wrestled till I was 31, I was fairly successful. I still got butterflies. It's not yeah. like, it's not like you it's don't get there. them. Yeah. Always so, there. You just learn how to deal with yeah, them. Yeah. And if you don't have them, there's a problem. Yeah. Right? So if you don't feel nervous, you don't care and you're, you're like, yeah. you're not engaged. And so mm -hmm. the whole reason they show up is to prepare you for this fight that you're about to have. And yeah. so, 
so then you learn to enjoy the feeling in this weird way yeah right? like when the butterflies start to build you know that you're starting to get yeah um you know engaged in what you're doing so, yeah. yeah so yeah so like my kids my kids my wrestlers i mean always are always looking to get that feeling to go away they don't yeah. want it and, and it's you know it takes time for them to figure out that these are good things and so it's, it's not going anywhere yeah yeah and so when i like and those feelings come up now because it's still a fight or flight right and so when you've got a, a bank calling you to, <laughs> to make a payment <laughs> you still have that same feeling of like yeah. i want to get out of here or do i just face the problem right yeah and so yeah it's almost like a better control of the emotional spectrum that's exactly right i've, yeah, I've you, learned to embrace yeah. um almost like just recognize that there is a spectrum of emotion yep. right and something will come up that's very negative or seems negative right i've learned in the last like five years that almost just listen to it and don't don't try to push it away or ignore it it's that thing is there but just listen to it and then it all, it's not as harsh when you kind of see it that way yeah right? yeah there was a guy that i was just watching i don't know which which video i was watching but anyways the idea of it was um here's this terrible thing that happened to you and the answer was maybe and oh here's this great thing that happened to you maybe like it's kind of like yeah this terrible thing might lead to something great down the road this great thing might lead to something terrible down the road like in the moment it might seem great or it might seem terrible but you don't know where that thing is going to go and so um when yeah you just you you accept the things you can't change you try to change the things that you can but you can't change them all at once and how do you how do you get your brain to focus on it's like those little experiments or experiments with those assignments they give you in grade four find the important detail mm. so here's a story now find the three things that actually matter in the story and what's extraneous and and uh I think sport in general um, gives people the ability to uh, shut out the noise and and then zero in on the zero in on the important problems and the and the help that's coming your way. What's the important help and what's the yeah what's the help that doesn't matter? Like yeah. I, we used to laugh in wrestling. So my high school coach, so Olympic trials two thousand three. He hadn't been my coach for twelve years, and him and his wife, who I was very close or I'm very close with. Um, Linda's a photographer and she was going to get a better angle of, of me. And I heard their conversation while I'm in the middle of the finals at the Olympic trials. So I heard Linda say, I'm going to go down to the map to get a better angle on this shot. But I, like I could hear their two voices through all the weirdness. Yeah. Right? And, and like, so, so yeah, so you kind of zero in on the people, the things, the, the, the things to focus on the important, the, the people that you know and trust and, yeah. and who's going to actually be there to help. you. Yeah. So, got it. Yeah. Now, so you said, so you were in the finals, the Olympic trials? Yeah, tw well, twice. Yeah. So I want to get into a bit about their credentials or what you did and like, what were some of the best, the highest performances, the best you've done? So, um, so I, n in domestically, like there's a domestic season and then an international season. And so um, domestically, I was our senior champ five times plus two Olympic trials. So five senior nationals plus the two Olympic years. So for seven years, eight years, basically, I was our number one guy in Canada. And then internationally, the best I did was, uh, I was top 10 in the world twice. Um, and Commonwealth Games, I won. And the Pan Am Games, I got bronze. And then at the World Cup, I was third. And in yeah. the Olympics, I was, I think, 18th or 19th. Yeah, that's crazy. For for those of you that don't know, like I've... I've wrestled and competed for a while, right? I did pretty good. Like I was, I, the best I did was uh, Western Canada Games Champ. Okay, yeah. To even get, I got fourth at that. Oh, did you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, like I haven't even got a gold at a, a nationals. It's it, it it is hard competition, right? So yeah. to be top, like this, the top senior guy, uh, that's senior in university, right? No, senior, senior, like past university. Mm, okay. So yeah. all the all the people that. So when you get to the senior level, everyone was a youth national champion and everyone was a college national champion. Like those are the people that try to become our national team, right? Are the people that have kind of gone through the system. Um, they've won multiple national championships. So then you take all those people and you put them in a room and say, okay, now who's the best out of that generation, right? Yeah. And then so it becomes difficult to hold on, which is why I retired. So my my target was never to be the canadian national champ i wanted to be good internationally and i got to a level of i would say like the b group mm. right so there's the a group 
six guys that kind of always rotate. They're always in the medals. They're always in the semifinals. There's these, like a group of, you know, Russia, America, Iran, kind of that Georgia, um, which is amazing. These countries of like 4,000 or sorry, 4 million people win the world team title. Yeah. Right? Like they're, they're awesome. Yeah. So you take this group of guys and so there's their, the A group who are always in it. And then the B group, we kind of sneak in every now and then. So, but for the most part, we hover between sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, all the way through to fifteenth, and then there's kind of a C group as well, just people that just don't have it, right? Yeah. And so, um, internationally, I think I got to the point for about a two or three or four year stint where I was in that B group, but then I started to get worse, and I was just yeah. kind of hanging on at the nationals. Yeah. So kind of old man savvying my way through the tournament <laughs> as yeah. opposed to Look, actually got some slick tricks. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. And just, you know, kind of yeah. strat strategic my way through an event yeah. as opposed to like trying to watching the clock, playing that to some degree. Yeah. Or just, the rank control. just picking and choosing when you, when you're going to score and making yeah. sure that, you know, you're just, so you're, once you get to that stage where there's, there's the 23, 24, 25 year old kids that are willing to put their head through a brick wall. And then there's the 31 <laughs> year old who's like, I got to go to work tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, when your priorities start to shift, um, yeah. it's time to go. Yeah. And so I found myself right near the end. So I retired in 2005. Um, right near the end, I was just in that, in that managing yeah. tournament stage and I was no longer viable at the international level. I went to the world. Yeah. I lost my first one at the world. It's one and out, right? Like you lose yeah. one, you're done. Yeah. And so, um, I was just no longer competitive yeah, on the international sure. level. And so it, it made no sense. Yeah. I, I wasn't sticking around to compile national championships. I was yeah. trying to be good and yeah. I was getting worse. Yeah, <laughs> so for sure. once you come to that realization that, yeah. you know, I'm only going to get, it's only going to get worse from here too. It's not like you're going to improve when you're 32. Yeah. You're only you're just going to diminish. It's going to go down. You're going to be less intense, yeah, yeah, less yeah. intense, less intense. Yeah. Um, to even get to the, to, to the world stage international, like, because I, I was pretty good at, like, provincial. I, I would be always top echelon in the, the weight group nationally. Yeah. I always thought, like, man, these guys to go international, they have to be, like, you have to be insanely good. Like, you have to be very committed. You have to be, you almost have to be a, a freak. You have to be, like, at least in my weight classes, yeah. I was like, to, to actually get there, I have to be training so much more and so consistently for a long period of time yeah. to even get that. I think that's actually the key. So as a, like everyone's athletic, everyone wants to win. Everyone's training hard. There's, there's a variety of components that come in. I had a lot of help. I was so lucky, right? Like I was lucky in my timing. So every time throughout my development that I was the right age, uh, like the oldest age, so Canada games, I'm the oldest age in the group. So instead of being a 17 year old competing against 19 year olds, I'm 19 competing against other 19 year olds. And then um, I'm on the Simon Fraser team who, win the national champion at the time they were in NAIA, which is an American. Now they're division two NCAA. Um, but I'm on the, the team with the guys that win. And then at the university of Regina, cause I went to both colleges, um, we win the national team title. So, um, throughout my career, I had a really strong group of people around me and really strong coaching and, um, mentors, at like in the room so the older guys always kind of took me under their wing they liked me i think because i was soft like i i, I was a good athlete but it, i wasn't going to hurt anyone and so yeah. if you're the number one guy you you like training with me because i wasn't gonna i yeah. wasn't abrasive i i was kind of i like to just do the moves pick <laughs> and, someone up put them yeah down, yeah yeah i wasn't them down i wasn't like a I wasn't like a bull in a china shop kind of yeah, wrestler. I was yeah. just a little bit more tactical than that. Yeah. And so I was, I was very gentle as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I just had a lot of help. Like, so yeah. in 96, uh, our national champion was Scott Bianco. He was on the Olympic team and I wasn't the number two, number three, number four guy. I was like number six or seven. And he brought me along as his training partner for the Olympics in 96. So then I got to experience the Olympics in 96. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. And so I just had all these like people and then Justin Abdu, who's the head coach at Simon Fraser. He was my main training partner once I got good. And he was the, like, you know, when you talk about being the best guy in the world, it's interchangeable on any given day, but he's the best in the world at the time at, at 82 kilos. And I was, well, 80, I think they moved it up to 85 kilos, but I was the weight class above. So I have the best training partner that you could ever have. Yeah. And also somebody who just never seemed to be bothered ever by the moment in front of him. Yeah. Right? Like 
He didn't care if it was a world champ. He didn't care about anything. Very just, calm, he eh? could just very smash focused. people. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And so I learned from him, right? Yeah. And then I had all the best coaches. And so I was lucky. I was very yeah. lucky. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the cameras are going to cut short here. Yeah. But what we're going to do is do a quick pause. Okay. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. Um, there's just one point that from what you said there that I really like that I've learned through business. I didn't know it as much in wrestling, right? My dad always told me to always find the best training partner that can beat you up, right? Yeah. In university, I didn't really have that, right? So, but the the a very powerful message is, and especially in the business world, but your network, who you're surrounded by, and mentorship, like that helps propel you so fast through whatever you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'd mentioned Justin. So definitely my mentor in wrestling, like without, without question. Um, and then in business, my brother. So my brother is a very successful entrepreneur. Um, and he's supported me and helped me. And without, without his mentorship and without his literal financial support, um, there's just no way that I'd still be in business. There's, right? Like it's, there's, there's no way business is, I call business the most competitive sport in the world. I think businesses, but like I've always, um, throughout my process, I've always been either surrounded by people smarter than me or paying people as a business coach, right? I'm just paying for a business coach now, but there's no way it it shortcuts your goals by like, you need that mentor, right? A lot of times mentorship will come through just buying or paying for a coach, right? Or being surrounded by people that are smarter than you in the area that you want to get get good at, right? Yeah. Well, like I said, to back to wrestling for a second, I, I, tell kids I'm trying to be like Jesus. I'm trying to like, I've already gone through it and I'm, I'm taking on your sins for you. You don't have to do all the stupid stuff I did as a kid. Yeah. You can shortcut it. Right. Yeah. And then it's the same thing. So my, my brother being my mentor in business is helping me short, shortcut the mistakes that he's already made. It doesn't mean I'm not going to run into a million other mistakes on my own. Yeah. Um, but it's incredibly helpful because like you said, it just puts gasoline on a fire. Right. So if I've got a good idea or I'm, trending in the right direction through his help yeah i'm able to to ramp it up yeah like in eight months instead of 18 exactly yeah or two years or yeah. whatever it's some stuff some very simple things are right in front of your face you just almost need to pay like oh i need to pay someone 10 grand just to tell me that one thing and that saved yeah. me five years yeah right yeah and that's not a bad <laughs> roi yeah if oh. you can save five years on time's a valuable asset I yeah it goes by fast yeah stuff is going by fast Wait till you measure time through a, your kid's eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ten years has gone by like like bang. Like yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now I want. So we have a bit of the the backstory of you, the wrestling, the mentality. Um, I want to go through the process of how you came from wrestling, what you're doing at the time, and how that led to the business you own now, YYC CrossFit. Okay. Right. So at, uh, so in university, like after university, what, what did you take and what were you doing at that time? So I was a teacher, um, and I had lots of, so I started in Regina and I was a teacher here in Calgary through the private system. And then I ended up at a charter school for about 13 years. Um, and I, I liked teaching. It was, it was a good job. Um, people talk about teaching being like coaching. It's not, they're almost opposite. So teaching, you've got a bunch of kids that don't want to be there. Coaching, you've got a bunch of kids that do want to be there. So they're not really the same thing. Yeah. Um, and I just started to find, so I was the phys ed teacher. And so I just started to find myself, um, uninspired and starting to get antsy. And so you talked about business being competitive. I I missed that. I missed the feeling of earning it myself and having a reason to open my eyes every day. Right. And so there was an excitement in my life that I felt compelled to chase. And so, uh, I did. And then my timing couldn't have been worse. (laughs) So, I quit teaching and started, I bought my first business in August of 2019. COVID hit six months later. Yeah. Right. We closed March 12th. It was March. Uh, yeah. 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 I think, I think closing day was March 12th, 2020. Yeah. So in that time I had bought a yoga studio and bought a CrossFit. Um, yeah. And within 30 days of buying the CrossFit, COVID hit. I remember seeing the signs like, see you in two weeks <laughs> and then yeah. two, two and a half years later. Yeah. What, um, why, why did you decide to choose a, a yoga studio and a CrossFit gym? What led to, to those? So I had, like I said, my brother's my mentor, but he's also my 
supporter. Um, and so I'd kind of told him that I was looking for businesses that fit one of two things. So I, I do want to do good in the world. I don't, I don't want to, um, you know, no offense to anybody who owns businesses, um, that maybe, uh, cater to people's vices, but I just didn't want to be part of that. So I didn't, um, and, and some of the lifestyles just weren't from like, I've got a family, a young family. Right. And so, um, I didn't want to own a bar. I didn't want to own a restaurant. Um, just because I have no, I have no background knowledge to rely on in, in those other than I liked bars when I was a kid, but, um, <laughs> so fitness, education, um, animals, that was kind of my, I, I had parameters set up. Yeah. Um, I like yoga. There's nothing like I wasn't, I wasn't a yoga, uh, aficionado or anything like that, but I liked it. I believed yeah. it. I think it's good for your health. I think it's good for your spirit. Um, so this opportunity came up and it was, uh, a business that had done well. Um, the owner, her, her circumstances had changed. She had a young family and couldn't, couldn't, uh, devote as much time as she would have liked to the business. And so it was just an opportunity really. It wasn't, it wasn't like I was hunting for a yoga studio, but it was one that came up. The CrossFit, was a little bit more, uh, specific. So I had a, one of the kids that I coach, his dad was a member at the gym. And he knew that this business was going to be up for sale and that it was probably a good what, deal. Coach for like one of the wrestling? <laughs> yeah, one yeah. of my wrestling kids, yeah. He was a member at the... So I originally bought um, a CrossFit that has since gone under due to COVID and, and circumstances. But um, some of that clientele, but the... And some of my some of my coaches kind of came with me over to the, to the new setup. So we transitioned really quick when when I lost the first one. Yeah. Uh, into YYC CrossFit. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, I kind of like what you said with uh, with business. You kind of want to do something good with it, right? You don't want to just be doing stuff that's just money, yeah. a bit more purpose driven. Yeah. Uh, with uh, with CrossFit, do you what uh, do you have like a mission as far as like do you have goals to help the community or help make people better people or what? What's your kind of mission with? Why would I see CrossFit? I would say it's the same as my mission with coaching kids in wrestling. And when I say kids, they're 18 years old, and I stay connected with them while they're going through university too. But I'm just hoping that they're better people after they know me than before, right? So um, wrestling develops all these characters, char- like characteristics, sorry, yeah, um, of, of positivity, right? Like you become a hard worker. You, you, like you said, you have better control of your emotional state. You're healthier. And CrossFit's the same. You work your butt off when you're in there. Um, it's a great community of people. And on top of that, you're developing other things outside of your health that help your overall health, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you're feeling stressed and you come in and you, and you work hard for an hour, you don't have time to feel that stress or that anxiety or angst anymore. There's a two or a three year or two or a three hour window where you just get to release it. Yeah. And it's gone and it's not, it's not there. And then when it comes back and you start to have to deal with that issue, at least you're in a better mindset. Yeah. And so for lack of a better description, I just want to help them with their health. Yeah. And it's not even their physical health. I think it's your your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health. Um, and these are things that you can steal from CrossFit, but it's stuff that I always believed in anyways, which is uh, fitness gives you a buffer against the bad things that are going to happen. Yeah. Right. And then so extreme fitness where you're pushing yourself in these higher intensity areas, which I believe in because of wrestling, right? And so I know the benefit of that high intensity um, fitness. It's, it, it just, if you're going to have a heart attack, maybe you survive, right? And, and then you still have a high quality of life. Or if you're going to have health issues down the road, they're not tragic health issues. Mm-hmm. They're just yeah. health issues that you have to deal with and you're stronger and fitter and better because you've done all this exercise and you've, you've essentially given your body a shield yeah. Against the bad things that are going to happen. Right. And so with those intense workouts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you just give yourself this resiliency yeah. that, that if, you know, if I was 400 pounds and never exercised and smoke and drank and something horrific happened to me, I'd probably die. Yeah. But if I'm fit and, um, you know, I've, I've put all this effort and time into, uh, building up my heart and building up my muscles and building up all these other aspects of resiliency then you know when you're 75 maybe the fall doesn't kill you right yeah 
just those small little things, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm just trying to have a quality of life for as long as I can, like high yeah. quality of life for as long as I can. And I hope that that transfers over to my clients too. To other people. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. cool. So you've done, you've done all sorts of training. Like you've been in the gym for years. I know wrestlers, you have to be, right? Yeah. What would you say, what's the main difference between working out in a gym and doing like CrossFit training? Like I haven't, I, I'm, I think just from wrestling, you learn to be okay with intense workouts, right? So I got into HIIT workouts. Yeah. When I go to the gym, I'm pretty much almost doing CrossFit. Yeah. I would say not as intense, like not with the same weight, I guess. Yeah. What, what would you say is the main difference? Why, why would people go? Yeah, what is the difference? Coaching in the community, for sure. So when you're in that pain zone, right? Like when... Like high intensity exercise hurts. Like it, there's no there's no sugar coating it. It's it's difficult. And so when you're in that zone of like you've got another five minutes left, but you're already at your you feel like you're working at capacity, and you look around and other people are still doing it, and other people are still smiling, and other people are just moving. You're more inspired to keep on going. So when mm. I because I do some of these workouts alone, and if I'm going to quit, it's when I'm alone. <laughs> it's not, yeah. it's never when there's a group there. Yeah. So the community is awesome and our community is incredibly supportive and incredibly, um, like there's no judgment, none at all. Like yeah. Everyone is just like, we'll all do what we can and we'll try our best to keep it high intensity. And then for sure it's the coaching, right? Yeah. Like, so, um, I feel like I'm a good coach. I know that my coaches that work for me are, are great coaches. And, yeah. and so, um, not only are we watching out for, cause there's kind of, there's, two um kind of avatars of who you might need to help you might need to help the person who just isn't going hard enough about this right so, yeah um but you also need to pull back on the person who's just doing too much because both of those people uh need help right so typically kind of the person who does too much is a former athlete usually a guy um who comes in and just picks the wrong weights at the wrong intensity the wrong volume and then you know they're not making it through the workout, right? Yeah. And so th the intention is always make it through to the end. You never want anybody to just, they hit such a high intensity that they can't continue. Then there's the other side too, where somebody who consistently under works, right? And so the coaches are there to help because there's a variety of reasons why they might not be pushing themselves, right? They might be, it might be a confidence issue. It might be a technical issue. It might be some injury that you don't know about. Yeah. Um, so it's not always just like they're not trying hard enough. It's often, that's not the case. It's, they're not doing what they can because of some legitimate reason. And then you have to help them work it through. And like, we have some amazing, like they're little tiny stories in the realm of the world, but it's amazing to watch where you see this person's never exercised ever. And with two, within two months or three months, they're doing all the movements. They're crushing the workouts and they're leaving behind people that you would like if you lined them up and said who's going to do better in this workout yeah you'd pick them the, you know the young 25 year old muscly guy but it's the yeah. exact opposite right that person's laying in a sucking their thumb in the corner and this person's still going so it's yeah it's uh yeah it's it's cool to watch when people start to build and um crossfit has these like standard movements that some of them are incredibly difficult like a muscle up or a ring muscle up and when you see somebody hit their first one ever yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. And I feel the same thing. Like when I get a muscle up, um, you're, it's, it's amazing. Like you feel this huge accomplishment that nobody, like you're looking around if anybody yeah. saw, but you know, you're in a gym yeah. <laughs> behind closed doors. So no one, yeah. no one saw it, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. And you could just like in moments like that. So I started, uh, that kind of reminds me of like when I joined jujitsu yep. mid thirties. Right. Um, when you pull off, like you're learning a new sport, you're competing, it's challenging. You pull off like an arm bar or something. Yeah. You're like, you're in your 30, you're 35 and you're like, I didn't think I was going to do anything again. Like I thought it was just pack it in. But yeah. then when you pull that off and then you, you know, it's hard to get, it's hard to learn the move and get it inspiring. Once you pull one of those things off, that's like this. It's like this heroic moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. You want to share it? Yeah. <laughs> you no, want, it, you wanna... it, it does something to you. It adds like another layer of confidence into your being. Yeah. Right. Do you, do you notice that? Like, so I'm curious about um, people that haven't, to me, it seems like people that would go on to CrossFit would be former athletes or people that have trained a lot before. Now for the, the avatar, the demographic that hasn't done training or they haven't done much, they've done maybe some co-op sports, whatever. Yeah. 
of these people that go into CrossFit gyms, like in your gym, what have you noticed as like a transformation in them? Like, what do you see as a common with these people? Well, so there's, there's different answers to that. So one is like the movement, right? So if you've never, it's, it's amazing how many people can't just do a squat, mm -hmm. right? And, and I throw myself into that group as well. Cause when I first started, like, could I back squat? Yeah, but I couldn't front squat and I couldn't overhead squat. And if I did, I wasn't going through a full range of motion and I wasn't able to hold any load while I did it, right? And so um, so I, I'm, when I say that, I'm not trying to be judgmental at all. I'm just saying that like there's a huge swath of people who can't do the functional movements to begin with, just the movement patterns, right? Then you have on top of that the intensity. So whether it's volume or whether it's load. And so you see these transformations in people who simply can't do the movement and within months not only are they doing the movement they could probably teach the movement and also do it with load and do it with intensity and do it under duress right and mm -hmm. so um you see this resiliency build up in in the clients and then through that like you don't develop self-confidence by by accomplishing something you develop it by failing at it and working and failing at it and working and failing at it and working and then all of a sudden you've accomplished it and then that's not the end Right. Like, so if you just accomplished it, you're not, it's not over. Now yeah. there's a new challenge in front of you. Maybe you got to do it with heavier weights. Maybe you have to do it while you're tired. Maybe you have to. So I'm working on double unders, right? Double skips at the same time. And I find it very difficult and I can get, I can link a few of them together, 10, 15, 20, but not when I'm tired. When I'm tired, it's just the rope just ends up in my feet. And so there's going to be a day where I can do 50 in a row and then. I'll still be at two when I'm tired. And then there's going to be a day where I can do 50 when I'm tired. And then that's not the end. Like I still yeah. have. So it's, um, yeah. So it's just this kind of overall, um, they start to view it like their, their adaptation starts to be the bigger picture, which is I'm not just trying to lose 10 pounds. I'm trying to be healthy. Right. And the 10, all of a sudden the 10 pounds isn't the goal anymore. It's just an overall better health. And all of a sudden it's not, I want to be able to squat 135 pounds or I want to be able to squat 450 pounds. It's that the challenge becomes a life, a lifelong uh, approach to it as yeah. opposed to a short term. I'm going to do this for three months. Um, so for me, the answer to that question is that I stopped looking for an exit strategy, right? So I'm going to do this for how long and then I need an exit strategy. It just became, this is what I do. Yeah. And that's a transformation that you see in a lot of the, the people that, that, that buy into it. Right. Yeah. So, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna have to try it out. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard and it's fun. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. And fun in a fun in a, like, I can't believe I did that yeah. kind of way. Right. Yeah. It, you feel a, a different sense of accomplishment, right? Yeah. Maybe at the gym by yourself. Um, you just kind of go through the motions some days. Yeah. I don't know. Just going with a friend, I work a bit harder. Yeah. Right. I, I like when I'm training now with a team in jujitsu, there's another level. Um, there's, yeah, something about that team aspect and that community aspect. I like that. Like, yeah. uh, you get to meet people of a similar mindset, right? Yeah. And, uh, you gain, like I know through jujitsu, you gain new friends that way. Right. Yeah. And it's an, it's a nice crowd to be around. I've actually met some business partners through jujitsu or people that are competing. I finally kind of fit in this basket of, especially individual sports. Yeah. Like, so yeah, actually CrossFit, um, do most people like most of them there? Are they trying to compete, or are they are they just there trying to get a more intense workout? I would say most are there. Just they're ambitious people. They're just trying to live a healthy lifestyle, right? Yeah. And then there's a smaller percentage of people that are looking to compete. Yeah. And that morphs over time. So if you do it for two or three years, and then all of a sudden you're like, the competition bug starts to. CrossFit's kind of neat because it it chunks it in terms of age groups, mm -hmm. but you can also compare yourself to the age group way below you right so yeah. um so I'll, i get to move up an age group this year i've never competed outside of just the open the open is like a worldwide competition everybody mm. can standardize their score and see where they fit um and so now that i'm in an age group that i know isn't easier but in my brain is easier i mean like i so i'm not trying not to dis disrespect anybody at all um but the way that my competitive brain works is okay. So I see that I might have an advantage for the next two years. Cause I'm going to be in, I'm going to be the youngest 
in an in a master's division, right? I'll be fifty and fifty one in a fifty to fifty five category. Yeah. So now all of a sudden that competitive thing in me is starting to like ramp yeah. up, and I'm yeah. I'm very eager to see where I fit once we do the open workout this this year. Yeah. Because now I'm in the higher, not the higher, but in the older age age category. Mm-hmm. So I've left that forty four to forty nine one, and I'm in yeah. the next one now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But most people aren't. I would say most of our clients are not looking to be competitive athletes just there um, for the community yeah for some good training but i think that they'd be i think that they'd be intrigued and curious like a lot of our clients would i think would be intrigued by the idea of trying a competition yeah, yeah. what's uh what's the average age group probably for our gym i would say 25 to 40 25 to 40 yeah yeah um and what would you say like so there's there's lots of uh crossfit gyms out there is there something that you do different or is there a thing that your niche you know is there a specific demographic you're looking with like what do you do that's do you do anything that's different from other gyms i could just say just through your experience and high level wrestling that and being a teacher and being a coach you you have that advantage there but do you is yeah. there anything you focus on or is your specialty within crossfit no i don't think actually my specialty is within crossfit i would say that my specialty is um I, I'm, I'm pretty good at recognizing people and their motivations behind their behavior and things like that. Probably from teaching, right? Probably also from competition. You, you're faced with, um, you're faced with these, a variety of people you don't really know and you have to try to figure out what makes them tick in order to outcompete them. Yeah. And so you have to be a pretty good reader of people mm. uh, as a teacher and also as a, as a high level athlete. Um, and part of it's self-preservation. You're trying not to get, you know, you're trying not to get too worked up yourself and all those bad thoughts that like, I don't think I can do this. And I think I'm going to lose to this guy. Like those things occur in everyone's brain. It's just how well you, how well you suppress it and, and work your way through it. And so, um, I think I'm pretty good at, at reading people and in terms of, um, where they need help, what they need help with, um, and then when maybe they're overwhelmed by something and also when they're not pushing themselves to the capabilities that they have. But uh, to be honest, I've never been to another CrossFit inside of Calgary. I go, I've been to lots of them outside of Calgary when I'm traveling. Mm. But um, so in terms of like how different are we from a CrossFit, I, I, I wouldn't really um, be able to speak to that. But I think we're very different than a box gym, like a corporate big box kind of thing where you go and you work out on your own and um i would say that the the service and the product that that we provide is far superior to um going just to a gym and just trying to figure it out right Mm -hmm. and so because i've done both you know like i i went to a to a big box gym for a long time for 10 15 years yeah when you're wrestling you get access to the olympic training centers and things like that so you have pretty high quality facility and, and get spoiled. Yeah, you're, you do, you get spoiled. You don't have to pay for anything. It's nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think that, um, just the, the, the attention to detail, the programming, the coaching and by programming, it's like all of our workouts have detailed plans with a strategy of a three month big block where we're trying to get our athletes to. And inside of that, it's scaled for beginners, intermediates, our what we call our prescribed or our our x workout and then also a performance workout for the people that are looking to be competitive athletes and so i have this massive dearth of of um options for for all of our clients every single day yeah yeah Uh, what what would you say are some benefits of like if you're comparing to just a normal gym would be benefits someone would experience in a crossfit gym versus just going to the gym well, so you're getting high level, high level coaching, right? So our coaches, um, we we understand the mechanics and the um, the technique of the Olympic lifts and of the gymnastics movements, and then of the just the functional fitness movements, and which these are all like buzzwords to some degree, but they're not if you understand them, right? And then also understanding how intensity works and how volume and load equal intensity, but on the on uh, like when volume goes up load comes down and when load goes up volume comes down and um and then it's all programmed right and so it's not just programmed 
so the, the tagline is uh, random or sorry varied but not random right it's not just randomly choosing things it's with a plan in place for where are we trying to go with this and yeah if you've ever been an athlete that's how coaches coach they coach in a block right so we have a three-month block and here are the small things that we need to do along the way to get yeah. here and yeah. so you're just getting a such a such a uh, like exponentially more more detailed program that yeah you, that you're trying to work towards your your goal right and then your experience and your history and your injury uh, history or your capabilities all determine how we scale those workouts for you and scale can be scaled down right scale to the easy but it can also be scaled to the hard yeah and so every single movement that we have is scalable every single movement that we have is watched over by coaches and so it's just it's like they're not even comparable products right yeah so so essentially uh, someone would come in right you'd learn about them yep and then set them on a a path based on their goals and where they want to be. And it's a nice guided approach to helping them get there. It's almost like having a personal trainer, but in a, in a group setting. Mm, cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, do you have anything else? That's, that's all the questions I had. I think, uh, I'm that's good. good. Yeah. Good. Hope I, hope I didn't sound like a meathead. <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> cool. That's all. Thanks a lot, Dean. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll, uh, get this uploaded and Kay. yeah, I think it went well. I think it awesome. went well. Thanks Adrian.